So we're at a bee care center. We're gonna learn about bees today. And my little turkey's over here. And they're actually looking at the bees already in the flowers. So there's lots of bees out here. Yeah, cool, huh? Did you guys know a worker bee lives for about 40 days? Whoa. Whoa. This is so cool. There's so much information. Dee's looking at a presentation about bees right there. Can you hear in that, Dee Dee? Are you, are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening to a documentary about bees. So cool. <gasps> Look, here's some fruits and crops that bees help produce. I want to go back to the display at the beginning. This is the life cycle. Do you see the little egg in there? And then there's a little pupa and a larva. And then there's so cool. And I like this right here because you get to see the honeycomb. And the drones. Look, there's the queen bee. Look at the queen bee. I don't know, it's such a glare. You see the queen bee? It's the big one right there. There, you can see it because my hand's kind of in the shadow. I'll lift you up in one sec. Queen bees can produce up to 1,500 eggs in one day. Wow, what do you think? True or false, boo? True. True? <gasps> True. Correct. My kids are so smart. Without bees, we could not have food. Without bees, yeah, we would eventually not have food. Yeah, if what if we could not live without food? We couldn't live without food, huh? What if we could live without food? Yeah. <laughs> That would be a good life. Um, we'd be really hungry without food, honey. We depend on bees to pollinate our food. Cherries are 90% dependent on honeybee pollination. Wow. She's doing something in the lab. Oh, oh we're going to start the presentation. There's a mite that gets on the bees. Those are the mites that are actually on the bees, mm -hmm. making them sick. Okay. So it's the ones that are covered in black, that, that are circled in black. Okay, only those specific ones. Yes, the rest of it is okay. just like debris that fell off of. Oh, so gotcha. this is a card, that, a sticky card that goes underneath this hive for 24 hours, and then you can count how many mites are dropped off because the bees will groom and pull them off. Who's this gonna try orange blossom honey? Was it good, Briz? <laughs> yeah. What did you try? Wildflower. And was it delicious? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Blueberry is on You tried blueberry? Yeah, I'm so good. Here's a bee suit. Right there. What? Yes. Go grab three. They smoke the bees out with that. These are the bee boxes. This is an example of a queen. I want to show you a couple of these frames. I don't know if everyone got to see a queen at the front, but do you see how big she is? She's in the front. She's so big. And this is because she's the mom bee, so she's got to be able to make all the babies. She's got to have lots of room. Does she stink? She can sing, and she actually has a smooth stinger. That's actually a really good point. Now, the queen has a smooth stinger because if something was to happen to her and she needs to defend herself, they want to make sure she can still live. So she has a smooth stinger so that if she stings, she won't die because she is the most important bee. There's only one of her in the hive. There's the hive. really because bees can sting, although they don't really like to, it's important that you have your equipment on so that you're nice and safe. What are you doing? Now what I'm going to do is actually light a smoker. What? And the smoker actually calms the bees a little bit. So it's a good thing to have when you're working the bees. There's a dead bee right here. Yes, there are. So remember, bees die every day. And certainly when I do demonstrations, they may get squished. So I only do demonstrations twice a week for groups. All right, so I am just um, lighting my smoker. There are some cedar chips in here. So Pet Betty, Sounds if anyone has a rabbit or guinea pig hamster, this is the same thing that they sleep on. It's really important to be safe with your fire. Why are they going all crazy? Uh, the bees are flying. I don't think they're going crazy. I think they're very happy today. 
It's nice and sunny. This is how bees are. They're very excited. They're always working so hard. This is why they're called busy bees. Put just a little puff down here. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit more smoke right on the top just to let the bees know I'm coming in. So every day, as soon as the sun hits, the bees go out and they fly all the way around. And then at the end of the day, they come home and they settle down. So they're so busy every single day. And when you're working with bees, you have to be very calm with your movements because you don't want to upset them. <laughs> it's okay, Dee Dee. We're in a oh, we're in a fine. screen thing. <coughs> oh! <laughs> look at the bottom! Look at the bottom! Hey, look at this, Dee Dee. Blue holes. <laughs> the bottom has blue holes in it. Look at all the bees. So cool. <coughs> all those bees. And inside this box there's probably 50,000 bees. So the white area right at the top is honey. And this is honey that's ready to eat, but they have to actually fill this whole area beforehand. Once the whole area is full, then they can start eating it for the winter, or the beekeeper can harvest it. But we just started this hive in April, which is just a few months ago, so we're not going to take any honey from this hive because we want to make sure they have plenty of food this winter. How many bees are in there? I believe there are about 50,000 bees in here. So that's a lot. No, if, if you, you, if you build don't down here, want to smell, yeah, I'm going to Sometimes they build all this different wax. Can I see? Maybe little. What percentage of it can you harvest? How much do you have to leave for them? To survive. So you typically want to leave about 40 to 50 pounds of this part of North Carolina for bees over winter. If you're in Minnesota, you probably want to leave them to put their winter water. And then you can harvest the excess. I would say they probably have maybe 30 pounds of store Clean them off the top here. They always want to go right back to the top as soon as I clear them off. So I'm going to put their feeder right back on the top so that they can go up to the feeder and get the sugar water and then take it down to eat. Wow, look, 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 look. <laughs> no, this one. Could they live on just sugar water? Um, they could, but you know, it's sort of like us. We need more variety in our diet. It's certainly not as nutritious. But a few minutes, they're all kind of calm down and go right back into the hive. So it doesn't take them long to calm back down. That's pretty neat. These are all the honey that they make here. And I tried the orange blossom. You can kind of get a hint of citrus afterwards. And then this gallberry. It's pretty good. How was that? <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> cool. See the mites on the bee right there? See the little dots? They're talking about how those mites are sick, are making the bees sick because they suck the blood of the, the bees. The four mites on that bee. Uh -huh. And what that worker over here was doing when she was in the lab, she was taking a frozen bee sample and counting the mites. That on. Wrong. Yeah, she was washing them off, scrubbing them off, and then she was counting the mites because they're doing research on how to make bees more healthy. And there's a mite, a uh, close-up. Remember the pillow that you guys had? That was the close-up of the, the mite. It looks like that really, really close up. That queen caught a virus that made her wings deformed. And pesticides hurt bees. These are all the things that make bees sick and hurt bees, the diseases. It says, please, please take home some fresh produce. These were actually grown here in the gardens. You guys want a squash or a pepper? Yeah. Let's take a squash. Wow, what is this? Ooh, this is a cucumber. <laughs> I guess we should take it since we touched it. <laughs> right here is a poster talking about the pollinators. This was a really cool tour. Was this your favorite tour so far? What about you? Did you have fun on this tour? You had yeah. fun? Did you? What did you learn? Um, I learned that bees um, can make honey. 
Please make honey. Mm -hmm. Very good. What did you learn, Didi? That we have to take care of bees. We have to take care of bees. I learned that bees are really, really hard workers and that the worker bees only live 40 days. Mm -hmm. And all worker bees are what? Feet. And all drone bees are what? Males. Yeah, and drone bees don't have a stinger. stinger. And the female has a smooth stinger, or the queen has a smooth stinger, right? What does that mean? A smooth stinger is that she can sting for a long time. Yeah, she doesn't die if she stings yeah. someone. She can sting more and more and more. <laughs> like Mom, yellow look. jackets and wasps. Mom, look. What is it? There's some gods out there. Yeah, we can go out to the gardens if you want. This was a really cool place. If you get stung, you, you get to go to the hospital. <laughs> if you're allergic to bees, you will, huh? If you're not allergic to bees, though, you don't need to go to the hospital. It just might hurt for a little while. And then you'll be all better. So we're out here enjoying the gardens. This is where the bees all get their nectar. They suck up the nectar from the flowers. Just like you were sucking up your honey <laughs> from your little tube. This is the garden they grow here. Look at that bumblebees on that flower. Now just remember, they're more interested in the flowers than they are you. So if they fly near you, you just have to, well, just don't mind them. Out for a they may check you out, but they're not gonna sting you unless you're swatting at them. Look, there's a painted lady. Oh yeah. Painted lady butterfly. Let me see if I can get it. There it is. Bye-bye. It's like I could live here. Yeah. Let's see the little bee you got. Stay on the path, sweetie. Can I see the bee you got? You love him? What you gonna name him? I'm gonna name him Cat. Cat? It has eyes on it. Do you remember to, know, to tell the difference between a moth and a butterfly? Yep. What's the difference between a moth it, and a butterfly? When a butterfly rests, its wings are up. When a moth rests, its wings are down. Like They're spread out. Right, good job. This right here is a hummingbird moth. And he looks like a little hummingbird and he's going from flower to flower. Don't catch it, Bruce. Just let him see. Let him be.